everyone, and welcome back to Sonic 3D Flicky's Island on the Sega Saturn. I am one wild sheep yet again, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we are now taking care of Volcano Valley Zone. Oh, the music. Oh, the soundtrack is amazing. I love this tune. I love the soundtrack of Volcano Valley Zone. And it's actually one of the tunes I do prefer in the Sega Saturn version overall in comparison to the Mega Drive version of the soundtrack. The Volcano Valley Zone theme is just amazing in the Saturn version. I love this sort of epic orchestral adventurish tune. It just really gives you that sort of heart pumping adrenaline. Yeah, we're going to save the flickies, yo. We're going to stop Dr. Eggman. I, I love this track. I really, really, really love this track. And especially uh, Act 2 as well, where everything gets a little bit more up-tempo. And it's actually one of the few tracks I'm not a big fond of. I'm not a big fond of. I'm not too fond of in the actual Genesis, you know, in the actual Mega Drive version of the game. So, hearing this this version of the soundtrack, I prefer the Saturn with this, this particular one. What can I say? But anyway, Volcano Valley, needless to say, is a typical volcano level. You're going to have fire turrets that are a pain in the ass to dodge. You're going to have magma lakes, uh, loads of fire bars to jump over. This is a very tricksy zone filled with lots, and I mean lots, of traps that will probably catch you off guard. That was my own fault. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, basically, I basically jumped at the... I jumped into the wrong point. There's actually a hole hidden underneath one of these uh, particular breakable blocks, which uh, I, I was one down. I was one below, so oops. But uh, your biggest friend in this particular zone will be the fire shield, so try and search it out. Try and grab a fire shield as soon as you can, because that will make the adventuring through the zone not frustrating. That will make it fun, and uh, you can basically ignore all of the fire traps and just continue on your merry way. And so this, this is probably the... Apart from the very, very final stage of the game, this is probably the most trapped vill filled zone. You've got so many fire turrets that if you have a normal shield or if you don't have a shield, they will catch you off guard and chances are they will clip your flickies. And of course, you don't need to be hit by... You don't need to be hit directly to lose your flickies in this game, ladies and gentlemen, which is something I'm really brought up. If an enemy hits a flicky themselves, the flicky will deta detach, if you will, from Sonic and they will start wandering about on their own. So if enemies hit the flickies, you can start getting annoyed. So trust me, getting a shield makes things so much easier because the, with a shield then, even if the flickies get hit, they will just sort of stay with Sonic and relax. And if you have a shield, basically only Sonic will um, be able to get hit by an enemy. But oh my god, this soundtrack is so good. I, I, I honestly love this tune. It's just so upbeat. I, can't, I don't know, it's so good. And this is probably, I, th I think it's either this zone or the next zone is your final chance to collect the seven Chaos Emeralds. So if you haven't got all seven Chaos Emeralds by the end of this zone, ladies and gentlemen, you will not be able to fight the final boss. And I would advise either playing through the game without the Chaos Emeralds and beating the normal end game boss, or restarting the entire playthrough again. This is one thing that bugs me about these older Sonic games. Like if you if you lose the chaos, lose again the Chaos Emeralds too many times, then no matter what, you just fly out locked out of the good ending. This is something that in the future of the franchise is sort of alleviate thanks to save files and save systems. So yeah, it's, it's a little archaic in that regard, but I don't know, I don't mind it. But with that, that is it for Act 1, oh my. And of course, uh, this progress, because we got all seven Chaos Emeralds now, the progression is going to shoot up. We're going to start plowing through these zones. Instead of doing one zone apart, we're going to be tackling two zones this part. And uh, the finale next part, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost at the end of the game, folks. We are at the end game, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, hope you got your Chaos Emeralds at the ready, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> One thing that may catch you off guard though is these walls. There's loads of hidden walls in Volcano Valley Zone that are very, very easy to miss because they sort of blend in with the misty foreground. Which, uh, if you're playing this on the Mega Drive version, I don't think it's much of an issue. You don't really have to worry about the misty foreground. But, you know, playing it on the Saturn version and whatnot, it can be a little bit hard to see cracks in the walls, seeing walls that are breakable. So, there's a bit of an annoyance there. 
And I know the weather effects are a big reason why some people don't like the sand version all of it, all for the Mega Drive, but I, I like the weather effects. I think they add. They add to the atmosphere. Like, the way I sort of see it is, um... The Mega Drive version is more of a classic Sonic experience, where you're just running through as much as possible, and it, it, it everything looks clean. But the Saturn version is really atmospheric. It's trying to get buff up the atmosphere and uh, add all these extra layers of special effects and whatnot to the environment. So, I don't know. That's what that's my own personal notice. And of course, be careful if you do try if you do hit the shield. If you hit the blue shield when you have the fire one, then uh, you will replace the fire shield with the standard one, which means bye bye. You're gonna be in pain because the fire shield. Well, the normal shield doesn't have fire damage, you know, it's, 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 it's annoying. I despise when I do that. And you'd be surprised how often I'll be going through here, and because I'm spin dashing every now and then just to keep safe, just to make sure I'm not getting clipped by mooks, I will spin into the normal shield's monitor. And when that happens, <laughs> I cry a little. You know, I cry a little on the inside. I cry a lot on the outside too, but that's beside the point. But uh, yeah, you do need to keep an eye out for all of these breakable walls because finding tails and knuckles in this zone are hard. You know, they are, these are the most hidden tails and knuckles will ever be, which makes sense because this is the final zone where you can actually utilize them. So uh, just keep an eye out for those walls because they're, they're, they're basically always either going to be in a wall or they're going to be on a hidden island somewhere to the south that you will need to find a hidden hole inside a uh, one of these, like, those breakable blocks you see right south underneath me. There we go. They're, they're right on. Now they're gone off screen. Now they're on screen again. <laughs> and there they go again. So sometimes you use. Uh, you have to look through holes and stuff. They, they, they're very cryptic in how they hide tails and knuckles in this particular act in this particular zone. Which uh, I don't know whether I like that because it adds a little bit extra challenge, or if I don't like that because I don't think the chaos emerald should be this hard to collect collectible. You know. I understand making the special stages difficult, but I don't think getting into the special stages should be that hard. You know, it, it's my biggest complaint with some of the later Sonic games. <clears throat> Sonic Events 2. <laughs> Sorry, I got a very bad cold. I'm still recovering. But yeah, the, my biggest uh, thing with later Sonic the Hedgehog games is sometimes they make collecting the Chaos Emeralds an absolute pain in the ass, and I don't think it should be that way. You know, I, I think the Chaos Emeralds should be an optional extra that you can go out of your way, but they're not too challenging to get. They need to be challenging, obviously, because otherwise you'd be able to break the game with no issues whatsoever, which... You know, I, I honestly think that Sonic 3D, this one, actually has a perfect balance of difficulty for the Chaos Emeralds. You know, it's, it's easy enough to get hold of the Chaos Emeralds, but, um... By the way, that's the boss. You just run into him. It's easy. <laughs> uh, it's easy. I like. I think. I honestly think Sonic 3D is the best difficulty ratio when it comes to Chaos Emeralds. You know, you can get into the special stages quite easily. The special stages themselves aren't too difficult, and they, the only way you're really gonna screw them up is if you are obnoxiously bad. So I like that. You know, I really do like the fact that it's like that in this one. Don't get me wrong. It's possible to lose on the special zones, but. Uh, you need to be playing really badly to lose, you know, that's what I'm getting at here, folks. Like, later in the franchise, you're gonna see special zones start to become absolutely obnoxious and a pain in the ass to complete. And I, I just don't, don't think it should be that way. But I say later in the franchise, we've already seen it back in Sonic the Hedgehog 1. You know, I do really need to redo the LP, but I, I don't like the Sonic 1 special zones at all. I, I honestly feel they're too luck-based, so... Now, in the case of Sonic 1, I always have struggle uh, struggles in the Chaos Emeralds, you know? And I think it should be easier. Especially in Sonic 1, where you don't even get a reward for beating the Chaos Emeralds. It's just, you get the Chaos Emeralds, okay, now you get the flowers, I suppose, and the ending. Whoop-dee-doo. It's why. But anyway, this is basically getting up to the end game, the Gene Gadget Zone. And this zone... Is it either a love it or hate it sort of zone? I personally, I love the aesthetic. I love the fact that it honestly looks like we're going through Eggman's base and all the fans that are in the zone that push you up. I like them as an idea, as a concept. But a lot of people despise them because there are loads of electrical platforms that you will see. And most people despise the zone for this reason because you can't stay still on one of these electrical platforms. You need to run around them. Unless you have a normal shield. 
Now, I did mention way back in the first part, the standard shield of the game does have its own unique property. And that becomes prevalent in this zone, ladies and gentlemen. The standard shield of the game is actually an electric shield. It protects you from electrified damage. So if there's electricity on the floor, you won't get hurt by it. It's very, very useful to have. It's kind of disappointing though how they made that an electric shield. Instead of making a traditional electric shield that sucks in the rings. Because I think a normal electric shield that sucks in rings towards your location would be so useful in this particular Sonic game. Just because the rings are scattered about. And due to the isometric... Um, the way everything's isometric, the way everything's top down, it can be quite easy to have a lot of issues with depth perception. So sometimes you'll find it a little bit tricky to collect the rings that are scattered about. I have personally noticed. So I would appreciate it if they chucked in a standard electric shield, but oh well, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. At least they have a means to protect yourself from electric damage, so there is that. But anyth anyway, one thing I want to talk about in regards to the actual bandits themselves, you'll notice that a lot of bandits usually come into a number of different types. Now, bandits in every single zone will pretty much always change up, you know, they will always have different bandits. But every now and then, is every zone is this one basic bandit that will just sort of either stay, stay stationary or follow you, you know? And I, I don't know if they're just reusing programming or anything like that, just to make it simpler, but... It's just a little something I noticed, like the, for example, the mouse bandic in this particular zone act a lot like the crab bandics from uh, back in Spring Stadium, you know, they they walk around, they, they act like they're drunk. <laughs> Although we do have to deal with enemies that actually flat out attack us now, which is a bit different, like those octopi. The octopi bandics will shoot at you. What, do you expect an in-depth discussion? Yeah, that's all, that's all I'm giving you, they shoot at you, whoop de doo but uh, yeah, there's Act 1 over and done with. It's kind of an awkward stage, kind of tricky to get through, especially in Act 2 where the platforming starts to become a bit more prevalent. And there, there is one thing that really does bug me about the final couple of stages in the game. They do try to push a little bit of extra platforming at you, which normally I'm all for. I'm a very big platformer person. I love my platformer games. I've grown up playing platformers. I will love them until the day I die. If there's a new platformer on the market, chances are I'm going to pick it up. Unless, of course, it's something retarded that doesn't have a jump button. <clears throat> Tinker. I think it was called Tinker, anyway. It's like, seriously, why would you make a game and call it a platformer and then not put a jump button in? That's just retarded. But, uh... <laughs> and the fact the game's apparently quite bland, anyway. I'm only going off what people told me about that game, so I can't say much about it. But, uh, yeah, they're gonna try and start pushing in more platforming towards us now. We're gonna, they're going to try and uh, be a bit more annoying, especially in this sequence by here, because there's loads of moving platforms, as you can tell. And what I just advise is just spin dash jump whenever you can to get over the platforming sequences and skip them as much as possible. Because if you make one wrong jump, which is so easy to do with this isometric perspective, you will slide down the slide. When you slide down the slide, then you have to backtrack all the way back around to the area you just fell from, you know, folks, and... If you lose all of your flickies in this particular zone, you will probably cry. In fact, it happened to me. Through the power of editing, you're not going to see that happen too much, but trust me, I, I got clipped by um, a mook, and it's it's just not good. I, I don't, don't get clipped by mooks in this particular area, because you will spend a very, very, very long time finding the mooks again and finding all the flickies that got dropped when you got hit. But uh, apart from that, it's a very fun stage. I like this one. It's uh, I love the aesthetic and I love the general design. Although, as you noticed, there was a uh, puffer fish bannock at the bottom of the slide. So we do technically need to fail this platforming sequence at least once. Because if we fail this platforming sequence at least once, then we'll be able to just continuously go down and... Uh, ah, god damn it! No! Basically, you need to fail the platforming sequence at least once just to go down so you can collect yourself uh, the flicky that's at the very bottom of the ramp. And yeah, you're not seeing me actually re-pick up all of the flickies because I did get hurt again and I did fall down multiple times trying to get to the sequence. It is a pain in the ass, ladies and gentlemen, okay? I'm, I'm just telling you, it is an absolute pain in the ass sometimes. But... Uh... A couple of the music in this game as well, you probably would have, you would notice, is actually got... They, uh, some of the soundtracks in this got remixed in uh, Sonic Chronicles Dark Brotherhood. For uh, the DS. If, 
And that's primarily because even though that game has an abysmal soundtrack, the soundtrack is composed by Richard Jacques. Don't know what the hell he was doing during that playthrough. I th doing playthrough? Composing a soundtrack for that game. I, I honestly think he was probably high on something because Jesus Christ. <laughs> No offense to the man, but the soundtrack in Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood was just abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. And yes, I am LPA now in the future, folks, so don't worry, I will show that off. That's gonna be a fun LP. <laughs> I'll be bitching a morning throughout the entire thing. But, uh, yeah, the eggs. One thing you'll find as well in particular about this this zone is uh, the exit is, is actually quite close to the entrance so you do need to go far away from the exit and go the opposite direction to find a lot of the bandits scattered about so it's a little something I have noticed in this zone in particular and oh for god's sake he's hugging the turret get away there come here bloody green flicky that runs away from you like honestly the green flickies are a pain in the ass. Not as bad as the red flickies, mind you. The red flickies can just go die in a fire. But uh, the green flickies, they, they are a bit of a nuisance. What can I tell you? But yeah, this is what I was sort of talking about when the when I mentioned earlier on. The platforming does get a little bit tricky. The platforming does get a little bit annoying during this point of the game where you need to be careful of um, a lot of these platforms. And every now and then you'll find yourself clipping through these moving platforms it's like they're not coded properly at some point so like the collision detection is slightly off so you'll find yourself clipping through the platform every now and then and sliding down the slope but before trying that platforming sequence I, I don't know why it took me so long to grab this I recommend grabbing this so you can just you can just calmly sit down and stand on the area and wait for the chance to jump you know like like for that I clearly clipped through that why did I clip through that I should have slid and landed on the platform Physics don't work like this. Granted, hedgehogs don't run real well, they run fast, but they don't run at the speed of sound and they're not all blue. Unless there are blue hedgehogs, and in that case, I, I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> but I don't think there are real blue hedgehogs in real life, you know? Unless they have some sort of mutation or they fell into a bucket of paint or something. Watch some biologist uh, just call me out now and just say, No, well, actually, sheep, there are blue hedgehogs in the wild. I'll make a noise like this. <laughs> don't know why. I don't know why the pig noise. I don't know. Whenever I hear um, someone on the internet correcting someone else, that's what I hear. I just like, oh, well, actually, you know. No offense to people who do that, because I, I, I found myself doing that a lot during the <laughs> before where someone's asking for something and I'm just like, well, actually, you were wrong. Yes. Hmm. I am not against people calling me out on my shit. <laughs> you know, if, if, I'm, if I make a mistake in these videos, you know, you feel free to comment on the video and just tell me, well, no, no, you're, you're a dipshit. Sh shut up. Just, this is, this is the truth. You know, if, if I'm ever wrong in these videos, you can always call me out. I'm not gonna complain. In fact, I appreciate it when people call me out on the shit. At least then I know, you, you know, I have to do it again and make sure I do more research in the future. I don't know. But anyway, for this boss fight by here, I'm completely glossing over the fight himself. Basically, you're stuck on this massive conveyor belt platform, and he is at the top of the screen. And basically, you need to dodge all of these spike things coming from whatever machine is behind him. And whenever Dr. Eggman himself ducks down to shoot his missiles, then there's your chance to boop into the cockpit. I love this boss battle. I don't know, it's very tricky to get hold of, to get used to. But if you know how to manipulate the physics of the um, conveyor belt platform, you can actually quite easily beat this boss. For example, if I hold up, well not hold up, if I press up and look towards him when I'm at the corners of the walls, because it's technically trying to push me backwards, I will be pushed into the wall. So I can use that to basically stay as still as physically possible and just wait in this one area for Dr. Eggman to float on down so I can just boop him in the head. You know, I appreciate this. I like this boss. It's good. It's a good boss. It's probably the hardest boss fight in the game, however, folks. Like, if there's a boss fight you're very likely to die to, I would say this is the boss. You know, it's so easy to get hit. It's so easy to lose your rings, folks. So, uh, you know, I would honestly argue this is the hardest boss fight in the entire game. 
But there we go, Dr. Eggman is down and out once again. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this part. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, people. Now catch you all next time when we take on the final zone of the game and finish off this game once and for all. So yeah, see you after. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish. See you and uh, catch you next time. Bye!